Once upon a time, at the other end of nowhere, there was a poor rural market town settled uncomfortably on a border. Much blood has been shed on these lands that separate England from Wales and whose border runs precisely through the very nervy centre of town. Like many border towns, it is disputed territory in heart, mind, body and soul. It lies somewhere between this world and the next, between sanity and madness, perhaps in one's imagination. But then again, decidedly real. It depends on where you draw the line, something the border folk are constantly battling over, that invisible and intangible line that is the very essence of who we are. For centuries, the marcher lords have demanded self-governance. In these faraway lands, there remains one castle that is still holding out on this dream. On April the 1st, 1977, the town of Hay, fed up with central government dictating Hay's affairs, declared itself an independent kingdom. A local inhabitant, Richard Booth, occupied the castle and appointed himself king. It is basically at this point a question of the divine right of kings against the divine right of officials. We have to tell our good and noble peasants that this doesn't mean V for victory as Churchill saw it. it what it really means is fuck off officials throughout the world. Officials, whether they are the pimp or prostitute of big business or big government, are our mortal enemies. We have some very well-trained CIA who have infiltrated in every position of authority. It's really a house of cards, the Quango's rule of rural Britain. When one card is removed, the whole lot will collapse. Total chaos and anarchy is the only answer. <laughs> At three of the clock on the afternoon of Saturday, the 4th of April, King Richard is celebrating 26 years of the independence of the Kingdom of Hay on Wye by holding an investiture and knighting the lords and ladies of Hay on Wye. All are welcome, and may God the grace. Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty is now about to begin. Citizens of Hay, your extraordinary talents, your brilliant and unusual qualities are enabling you to take the courageous step of separating yourself from central government bureaucracy. The council has a proven record of failure and the opportunity has now occurred to establish a unique form of government which will make Hay famous throughout the world. Independence means that we must revive the market and produce our own product. I now raise the flag of independent Hay. The local police, tired of endless conflict, took little notice of current events. London, however, felt the town had gone over the line in declaring itself a despot nation. It sent an inspector down to write a report on whether the town should be declared an insane area, so not to influence the rest of the country. But little did she know that other world she was now entering. To begin at the beginning, 
It is spring, moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black. Hay, a typical Dolesville, as defined in 2A of the specialised report. The houses are blind as moles, though moles see fine tonight in the snouting velvet dingles. And all the people of the lulled and dumbfound town are sleeping now. As it has no economy to speak of, it is safe to conclude that the aforementioned town is of zero-sum significance. Hush. The babies are sleeping, the farmers, the fishers, the tradesmen and pensioners, cobbler, schoolteacher, postman and publican, the undertaker and the fancy woman, drunkard, dressmaker, preacher, policeman, the webfoot cockle women and the tidy wives. Its a thousand inhabitants are without character or particular merit. Come closer now. Only you can hear and see behind the eyes of the sleepers the movements and countries and mazes and colours and dismays and rainbows and tunes and wishes and flight and fall and despairs and big seas of their dreams. From where you are, you can hear their dreams. Every April the 1st, I make a few more pairs, you see. Right, yeah. Someone's got to lay the red carpet, so it's high pressure. Anything we could just use for an investment. You want red? Any, any, well, any damn colour. Red blue, is blue. really... Blue red. or red, blue or red. Blue, it's up to blue, the minister. Red, minister, red. it is totally... Red, you you red. say red or blue, it doesn't matter. The cabinet was very important, of course. All of us in the cabinet had specific jobs to do. I was sort of the Minister of uh, Housing because I'm in the building trade. There was another friend of mine, uh, Norman Rackliffe, he was uh, uh, Minister of Transport because he was always driving lorries and whatever. And, and my brother, I forget what my brother was now, but there's about 14 of us. And every month we used to have this, um, the meeting, the cabinet meeting, look, see, before the actual Independence Day came off, look. Yeah. The decision-making machine was possibly one of the most important um, factors in the whole of independence. It was a dial, rather like on the game shows, and on the dial were segments uh, with chop off his head, go to the pub, and every other segment was go to the pub, have another drink or something. So we spent a lot of time actually having a lot of drink, but all the cabinet decisions were taken with this machine, and wherever it stopped, that's what you did. Or you didn't do. Because, you see, the ultimate decision was what you wanted to do, really. Um, <laughs> and so it proceeded. Preparations for the investiture were underway. <laughs> Behind the scenes was another reality. Your Majesty, can I put your crown on for you and then I will go and announce you. Where okay. everyone dreamt up a larger part to play. Every year, the royal household were in attendance to pay homage to their king. I think, in a sense, I became queen by accident, just because everybody made me it. I don't know that Richard ever thought, we'll be king and queen. I think he thought, I'm going to declare, declare this place independent. 
And then I imagine it was kind of an organic development in that somebody said, well, you'll be the king, you know, and where's your girlfriend? She can be the queen. So that was really how it happened. As the Commander-in-Chief of King Richard, long may he live, Welsh Samurai Regiment, um, I would like to announce that we are going to be having nine indoctrinations and investitures. But first of all, we are starting with one beatification. Saint Lucy comes forward to the king. You guys are too dangerous. <laughs> In 26 years, the royal entourage had expanded from a court of lords and ladies to foreign ambassadors and dignitaries who travelled from far and wide to be welcomed into this peculiar kingdom. We went on a walkabout around Hay, which was the most embarrassing thing I've ever done in my life. And people shouted at us, and you didn't know whether to try and act like the Queen Mother or to give as good as you got when they shouted, you know. It was actually very funny. They were shouting at Richard things like, you stupid bugger, <laughs> which I quite liked. Um, they weren't all. No, a lot of them were very for it, but there were certain people that um, didn't approve. I've got a passport upstairs to allow me to go in and out of hay. If you didn't have one, you weren't allowed in. So, isn't that totalitarianism gone mad? I mean, if you want to look at it like that. I think people thought he was dangerous. I think some people thought he was dangerous, not mad. Yeah, it was taken seriously. I bet the whole thing was actually discussed in Cabinet. The uh, usurpers in Westminster. They not only took it seriously, uh, some were worried. Some were worried that actually it was a real independence. The local council were jolly worried. I mean, Richard is not a group person. I mean, he's the ultimate individual. And people are always afraid of that because it is dangerous. You know, you get ideas which are out of the circle. Richard was a big fish in a small pond, so it made a big, um, big splash. Suddenly, this tiny town of little consequence had been put on the map. In making Hay independent, I became kind of independent. We decided if our economy was to survive, <coughs> we had to think independently of conventional thinking. We want as many book towns as possible to promote the rural economy. We were not promoting a book economy, but through using books to promote a tourist economy. They are not valuable books but they are a reason for people to come to Hay. What the tourist wants is a bargain. Books rained down on Hay, the king buying them in by the ton, transforming this semi-literate backwater into a magical kingdom of books. American presidents. Even the dustman spoke like fried. You, you raided my Kennedy collection. No, 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 this is Nixon. When I first started working here, I used to dream about books. Sometimes Jenny and I wonder what on earth we were going to catch from some of these books. I mean, we had the terrible load in. Came from a house that had stood empty for years, and the books were dirty, stinky, and we were coughing and spluttering. Richard just had so much vision. He didn't know quite how to do it, but his vision is enormous and always has been, and quite unique, I think. Every publisher in the world is working for Hay on Y, because every book becomes second hand. The world press kept coming from more oblique kingdoms and other nations. I still can never get over it, the fact that 
it's sort of almost at the center of the book world, the second hand book world. It is just amazing because it's, it's so small. It's a long way from anywhere. And a lot of people wonder what on earth Richard was doing, sort of doing it here. He saw it as the potential of it. And he knew that a lot of these old houses in Wales were, people were selling them and he got rid of their libraries. I mean, he bought, bought back thousands of books. Books created a certain magic of their own. Hay was put to work. Booth's Bookshop, hello. And people flocked from around the world. Red breed. We have exotic breeds here, the staff. I worked at Targoth Mental oh, Hospital when the mental hospital was going. It closed not that long ago. I think it's in the last five or six years. How many of them went into the community, I don't know. <laughs> yes. We're normal here. It's the rest of the world that's slightly peculiar. Hay has changed so fundamentally because of books. They frightened of the books and they frightened of the people that, that the books bring. Proto-Indo uh, uh, European yeah. books on language. Yes. These booksellers largely started off working for Richard. Uh, they have become independent in themselves. This particular independence is far more important than people think. Oh, yes. The importance of it has been to make people think, be curious about who they belong to, what belongs to what. Well, if you can declare yourself king, maybe even the poorest of us can be barons and ladies and live in this marvellous place. I feel like a sycophantic hydrangea on a bed of mintos. Would you be like to have um, Alexander Reverend Alexander Hislop's Two Babylons? This shop is like a music hall. You have one act following another. <coughs> <coughs> Trouble. <laughs> well, that's the same again, it's it's I do sometimes crave a little normality. It is, you're speaking to the very man. He's just come back with his role and Thumbelina. If I wasn't okay with it, I wouldn't have lasted this long, but sometimes it's just nice. It would be nice to come in some days and just think, I can have a really straightforward day. One thing that they ought to have, the resident psychotherapist or psychiatrist here, wouldn't it? Probably just inside the door there, that section there, yeah. yes. I think that's what we need, crystal healing, don't we, here? <laughs> and books about dreams, because we might be living one every day. This is, this is where humanity is. This is where human nature is. This is where human knowledge is. Every book is waiting for someone to read it, at least once. And every book has the power to change somebody even a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Vast amount of power in that, in all that detail. Somebody might buy it, come across one article, and the way they thought about something has changed forever. They, so they, they think, you see, it starts them thinking, it starts that thinking process off, and that's so important. If we don't think about what's around us, what we read, what we see, what we talk about, what we hear, then we're dead. It's, it's like a little, um, it's like a little bomb waiting to go off, isn't it, for somebody? Boom. Central government was getting jittery at such proliferation of ideas that seemed to give the town dreams beyond its station. Did somebody plant a bomb? A suspicious package. The story I heard that it was uh, a lump of cheese <laughs> with some Arabic uh, writing on it. But it must have blown up into smithereens, I think. <laughs> it's all splattered across somebody's shop front. <laughs> there was a bag with Arabic writing on it. You never, you don't know anything, do you? It's a bag of books. Books are fun. 
Let's go and look. There's seven, four hickey left his bag of books lying about. Next thing we know, we've got a bomb disposal unit, about 20, 30 odd policemen, and everything's going crazy. <laughs> but uh, pass me that oh, uh, blown up book. You don't know these days, do you? I've never, you know, experienced anything like that. The town was shocked by such an intrusion. We're not nervous because of what's been happening in, uh, in Baghdad, but uh, we had a controlled bomb explosion recently, so we're sort of slightly nervous. Right. The council was determined to smarten up its act. Can we put some plants in for the festival? That looks an absolute mm. shambles out there. I propose, I second, uh, uh, of up to £50. Yeah, pounds I think it'll probably be a lot less, yeah. Yeah, because we just put some nice bedding stuff yeah. in there. Yet again, the town had divided loyalties. The kingdom had drifted far away from the outside world, and now, as before, it felt misunderstood. Time passes. Listen. Time passes. An owl flies home past Bethesda to a chapel in an oak, and the dawn inches up. Despite all the good intentions of the town, it felt the need to defend its name. Hay is no different to any other town. I mean, I, you know, view Hay as being a very normal sort of town with a few eccentricities in it. There's lots of very sane people in Hay and lots of boring people like me in Hay that don't wear cardboard crowns on their heads. Well, the majority are fairly sane, normal people. Come to the council meeting. When they elected me mayor, it was not, I believe, to go into fancy dress all the time. Richard had another one of his silly investitures where, you know, he's been sitting there with his cardboard crown. But after what has happened, I think it should be something to be avoided. There are people who are more eccentric than others, but you can't brand the town, you know, in this way. What's wrong with you? Come on, Al. All this attention just attracted more people eager to discover what all the fuss was about. It's somewhere you can be, and you don't have to be a certain, any particular sort of person. You don't have to conform. Richard, is, Richard, when you think about it now, he's achieved, by being who he is, absolutely an enormous thing. I mean, he himself built up this town on his personality in a lot of ways. He had suddenly become a fashionable, if not quite respectable place to live. The church teaches that we individually are made in the image of God. It does make that point about individuals, and that there isn't a supernatural pastry cutter shoved into our guts and uh, making us into a, a divine gingerbread man or something. It's an individual thing. Some people approach something new when they say, is this bad or is it good? rather than saying, well, what is it, before they give any kind of qualitative judgment. So I, th I think that there is a tradition in Hay of saying, well, what is it? Hay's newfound prosperity brought a new breed of people, many of whom were unaware of Hay's unique nature and simply failed to recognise the king. you got to be a king. Time was a new commodity to Hay. Very soon the town was suffering under the strain of its success. Quick clocks, pendulum hard knocks, china, alarm, grandfather, cuckoo, clocks shaped like Noah's whirring ark. Clocks that bicker in marble ships, clocks in the wombs of glass women, hourglass chimers, to wit to woo clocks, 
chimes that pluck tunes, clocks with no hands forever drumming out time without ever knowing what time is. Hay was experiencing a boom, but the kingdom was little able to cope. Say, for instance, you know that you got six in for breakfast, right? Yes, but I forget. So I'm terrible in the morning. The night before, peel the mushrooms oh. and boil them on the stove. This is getting water. complicated, no, Melvin. It's easy how I do it. No, listen. My stereo is broken. The granny's dance set is going back on again. It's a disaster. I can't deal with it. I need noise. I'm a noisy music man. You know. The town had grown a little self-conscious. We're hoping you're enjoying our patronal bash. We're trying so hard to raise plenty of cash. To buy some quad cassocks and surplus is new. So thank you for coming and paying up to See me. Locals were hard to come by. At least at one place in town, time stood still. That is the best pub in the world. <laughs> That's the top of the range, that. <laughs> I have never known a pub like that in my life. She is a friend of us. Where are you leaving? That's a queen of things. Hello, hello, Lucy. Uh, Lucy, can I have the enormous pleasure and honour of buying you a drink? Well, have an orange juice, Lucy and myself have well, been it. friends for 40 years. <laughs> it's very nice to see Lil around. Yes. Lil, what would you like to drink? No, I don't need drink, thank you. Try going home now. Well, have a drink before you go home. Port! No. Brandy! No. Whiskey! I don't want nothing. A double scotch! No, thank you. I'm very offended. I do nothing, Richard, thank you. I'm very angry, all right. I don't drink a chicken on tablets. Oh. Coca-Cola? No. Glass of water? Glass of milk, please. Baby, baby sham. Can I get anybody else a drink? Here, the locals' only concern was to make in a day enough to buy a round. 80. Thank you very much. Thanks. This is an auction, ladies and gentlemen. It could be an ideal retirement cottage. It would make a great investment cottage. Whether Hay was for sale. Longer. Would someone like to make me an opening bid? 100,000 a bid there, 100,000. And market forces effectively exiled many locals from their kingdom. When people come with money, houses go up, they're very expensive, and eh? We don't get much of a look at You know, it's just, it's unreal. Well, if Hay carries on the way it is, there won't be any locals living here in like 40, 50 years' time. The young boys haven't got a chance, look, see? So isn't it your job as the Minister of Housing? Not officially, but uh, the powers of be, they always got the last say of me. The 151,000 then, I sell Woodley. I think we should have been left totally alone. I think that we should have had it as a prime necessity to create housing for workers. And those workers we should have found from within our own lone community, but the people run a very bad book down and it fails, but they still get planning in a beautiful area. By running a bad book town, they could still all finish up as millionaires. New times brought new books, creating new ideas and ways. The king felt threatened by the changes in his kingdom no longer under his absolute control. People of Hay, it is a time of siege. There has been a desperate and vicious attempt to grab the name and fame of the town of books. We do not sell new books. In second-hand books, throughout the world, we can be competitive. In new books, we are dependent upon grants, subsidies, the wisdom of the bureaucrats, the sponsorship of the Sunday Times. Why cannot they be interested in the millions of books which they already have in hay? Somebody indeed ought to tell the intellectuals what actual culture really is.
As the king prophesied, the town's rising status attracted the frontline representatives of global capitalism. They brought promises of permanent prosperity, but unfortunately, they were mere illusion. Fight the strongbow, please. Live in the dream, Dickie, live in the dream, mate. Wonderful to see you. Yeah. Living in a rural area, the real attraction that could support the book town is the traditional rural economy, but it has been slowly strangled by red tape. Everything from free-range eggs to home-cured bacon to green top milk, even down to watercress, are slowly being made uneconomic by absurd regulations. Richard is the first person that I've ever heard, and everybody does it now, go on about, um, you know, how sad it was that small shops were closing down and how sad it was that people didn't eat real food. The multinationals taking over, the small shopkeepers and so on. And, you know, it's taken 20 years or whatever it is for, for, you, for this to be normal kind of thinking. The butcher, the baker, Hayes candlestick maker realised too late what was at stake. Profit for a big company. That's what it amounts to. Bashing the farmers down on the, on the prices. The water, we buy? No, no, producing as much as they can on chemicals. And then they're carrying the money away. Like you take that one down here near a supermarket. So you're all taking their money down there and all that's going away from here. None of that contributes to our rich economy at all. You're going to make a large banger for the king, aren't you, Sid? King Richard's sausage. He'd like that, I expect. Yeah. <laughs> We don't live in the country just to make money. No, I think the pleasure from an ordinary second-hand book is far greater than the pleasure from a million pounds. I will stay loyal to this dream of a book town. The time had come for the king to reinstate his authority and save his original vision of the kingdom of books. And uh, the council election has to be in to, by tomorrow. Get Betty on the phone if you like. Okay. <laughs> it's Anna, it's Richard Booth's secretary. Council elections. Richard suddenly wondered if he'd heard that perhaps the last date for applications was today. It's so late that she hasn't got any left. They should have advertised a council election throughout the town. Well, it, it, I'm well, around the town for three weeks. I haven't seen a council. Well, They're trying to shut me up. No, Richard, conspiracy theories go right to one side. What is it? The returning officer at Landrin Dodd County Hall has all the forms. They don't need to be until Thursday. If he sends one today, you'll have it tomorrow. Well, yeah, why haven't I had it before? Because you have to apply, Richard, it's not automatically We well, haven't. Uh, Thank you. you. All right, thanks. Bye. The battle for the kingdom was on. Oh, we've just learnt that it looks as though they're fiddling the boat. So we will be writing to the chief executive of... Paris County Council saying we want security for the votes. You don't realise you're too nice and sweet as a girl how very corrupt the system is. What's... On Tuesday, we are having a Day of the Artichoke Party. Booktown switched to promoting a year-long economy on local projects. We are in June now. That is a period in which the artichoke is good. We are very fortunate in hay, in as much as we got the major artichoke chef in the world. <laughs> if that is not an election a winner, I don't know what it is. I'm getting someone to cook artichokes and to promote every different type of local project. So we'll get hundreds of millions of pounds from it. Publicity for an apple or a pig or an egg or whatever it is. Yes. So I've got various policies. And by the way, if you'd like to come to an artichoke party at the castle, I believe in artichoke infanticide. I think we've all got to be friends together as much as we can. Indeed, Richard, I've been preaching this to you, as you know. Anyway, right, best okay. of luck, old boy. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, see you around. Indeed.
This Thursday it is. Yeah, it is. That's what it is. I think they're trying to keep it a bit quiet. I thought that my clock's half an hour slow. I, I thought I was catching the post and I've lost it. All right, I think I've got it organised, but I'm never too certain with myself. The night before the election, the King played what he hoped would be his trump card. <laughs> what is this? So, well, I have no clue. Are they legal? Yes, quite pleasant. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Rest broccoli. Artichokes. That's quite an imaginative leap, actually. Are you going to be adventurous? Richard, what does the artichoke mean in your electoral campaign? The revival of local produce. There are, in somewhere in this world, weird artichoke enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. So we'll say there are 2,000 niche markets, uh, you see, uh, for the specialist kind of tourist. Interesting. <laughs> the artichokes are gone, and good riddance! <laughs> The main thing is when you need to elect people is to elect people who are competent and capable and work hard and do things in a systematic manner. 611, thank you, you need to follow the arrows. That's why I think that we should focus on who is the best person to do that. Enough said. We're going to vote. How are you? Did the devil cast his net now? Hello. How are you? Hi Lucy. Take care. Is she here? Yes. I do, yes indeed, Richard. Oh, God. I shall be across there later on. <laughs> the king set out to rally his loyal subjects. I hope not for Richard. He's just gotta put it into his mouth. It is a big day. We vote for Richard because we know Richard pretty well. We know the other one is pretty well too, but which has done a lot for the town, isn't he? <laughs> hey, you bloody old boat. I will, I will, I'll be down with the boat. You'll be down your wife. Yeah, we'll be down with the boat. The good thing about it is there's nothing you can do about it. It's all, it's all done and dusted. It's in the hands of the voters. Absolutely. And there's no more to be done. Uh, have you worked here? Uh, no, actually, I yeah, haven't. It's a fucking election. Goodbye, Yeah. Yeah, I like your very much any day. Well, I would like to buy you a drink anyway. It doesn't fucking matter. Can we have a gin and tonic? What a car it. Vote for the king. And I'll have a large curb along the road. Thank you very much. Long live the king! Who <laughs> 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 you fucking vote? I'm getting pissed now because there's an election. The people of Hay are revolting. Yeah, right. Let's go. Uh, We do need to be absolutely certain that when those boxes have arrived in Brecon, they are not tampered with. I but intend to take them into Brecon. There is no label on the top of it. All we want is absolute security. Time passes. Yes. Time passes. Ivian Design being the returning officer at the election held on Thursday the 10th of June 2004. Do hereby give notice that the number of votes cast for each candidate at the election is as follows. Richard George Booth, 121. Charles James Gibson Watt, 452. I do hereby declare that Charles James Gibson Watt has been duly elected. Congratulations, congratulations. In this new age, the King's vision was seen as little more than madness and a nuisance. King Richard might have lost this fight, but it was still to be seen if he could win the war. Oh, it's one of those days. Terrible, 
I couldn't sleep last night. Well, you know how if you know there's something bad going on, you, you go to sleep and then you wake up and you think, oh, why am I feeling like this? And then you remember. The king is gone. He's lost his battle. There used to be a, a service peculiar to Hay on White Telephone Kiosk, 2369, dial a rumour. All I've heard on the grapevine is the king is going to wield the axe. You've just sold out New English money coming into the area. Heads will roll, I've been told. Heads will roll. If it's right, he thinks it's time to pack in. What do you think would happen to Richard without his books? Dead in six months. This bloke, apparently he made an offer for the limited, I gather. I said, know so little about him, you know. I imagine he's a yuppie or something, yes. He's not tall like Richard. Complete opposite, I would say. A real uh, sort of high-flying property dealer type who, you know, rings up. A rich booth, please. And you say, oh, sorry, he's not there. Fine. When will he be here? Right, thank you. Turn down. He turns up in very, very smart cars. My flesh crept at the, 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 the mere presence of the people. You know, I just simply can't bear it. He's been in one of those peculiar moves that pattern me know that something's going on and he's distracting himself by doing too many things all at once, you know. What's the aim of this Talgrass? So you can say he's not having anything to do with hay and he's moving to Talgrass, that's what he likes to do. He likes to make a big thing about how dreadful hay is. Are you from Wales, madam? I am indeed. Well, we want Talgrass as our new capital. Talgrass is the capital of Wales. OK. okay. We want to be down to the capital of Wales. These are buggers in the Welsh Assembly, but they don't know the difference between a new and a second hand book. So, who is the King of Hay now? Me. Very pleased to meet you. How do you know? I didn't realise. <laughs> but you've got no crown on, see? No, that's I what, don't know about it, but I. But you don't know who I am. I'm the Mayor of Trigair. We'll, we'll put it aside, oh, and, ask your boss, and then we'll put it up if he says yes. Okay, go on, let's go for the way. Okay, thank you very much. We can't ask more than that. Tell your boss if he wants a scotch with the King of Hay, he can have it when he comes to Hay Castle. Okay, would you like an ice cream? Yes, I would. I would have an ice cream. I live in a rotting castle in the middle of Hay. Would you like a plate in your ice cream? Yes, please. Whilst the king sought new lands to conquer, his loyal subjects had little idea of what the future for the kingdom might hold. I think there's something will be true because the rumours around this town on the Sunday was unbelievable. In um, Anthony Cleopatra, that um, phrase you know, to be toss away kingdoms. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want it to change. I mean, I want it to go on being Richard Shop and, you know, just. The way it's always been. Part of my watch, mm. um, No. No. What time is it? Twenty to one. Oh, yeah. And it is a way of life. Ask Tom to take me up to Les's. I say gardens. Tom? Tom, it's Pat from the bookshop. Lil wonders if you'd come and fetch her to take her to Les's. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. She, he's not there today. He's not there? Not there. Le, Les isn't there. Hey? Les isn't there today. Pardon? Les isn't there today. In where? Oh, God, no. Les isn't there today. Oh. She said that yesterday. He's gone somewhere with his sister. Oh, Joan. Yeah. So I mean. So then. Do you like this nice weather? No. No. Oh, right. Oh, my, you playing me up today. Oh, dear. Excuse me, Lil. Hello, Richard Booth Books. It is a special shop, I think. It's, it's quite, it's, it's actually unique, I think. Richard is hay. I mean, Richard made hay what it is. Do you like working for Richard? Yeah, I like Richard, yeah. Well, you ought to. He knows my great-grandfather, Bill Powell the Butcher. I mean, Richard will not give it up here, this with, I mean, it's his life, it's, it's everything about, you know, it's him. It's very really sad, well. it's it, and then the end of an era. Lots. We've been to this, Cotters and I, about 23 years ago, we had the same thing when Richard sold the cinema. Richard came into my office at the cinema, and uh, in a very strange mood, there was a mahogany table in my 
my, my office and he l lay full length on it and said, I'm, God, was, I'm awfully sorry, it's going on Monday. Leon Morelli, when he bought his stake in the town by, by taking on the cinema bookshop and its staff and stock and everything else, he wasn't a Richard Booth, you know, he was approaching it in a more conventional fashion and saying, well, okay, we've had the kingdom, let's now have the sort of the backlash, the counter-revolution, and we did have some kind of referendum to decide whether they should actually uh, ask um, the king to abdicate and, and for us to go back to uh, under, under, under the House of Windsor. Of course, Richard took it all seriously and was absolutely furious. I mean, he's had a running battle with Morelli ever since he entered the town, you know. He thinks that he's, you know, he's been responsible for a lot of things that Richard doesn't approve of. And um, so it's, he, he's been his arch enemy. Richard behaved, I suppose, like a, a medieval monarch who uh, was under threat. I want, because my life is booked down, I have to prove this now by going to the international world. Yes. In ten book towns all over the world, I've had more support than I've had in, in her. Yeah. You're, just, you're just tired of fighting, aren't you? I, well, I, it's not that I'm tired of fighting. I get no credibility. You cannot go indefinitely being humiliated in the town. How would you like it if there had been 40 or 50 people in the village you lived in Thedid to do the maximum damage? It's sneer, sneer, sneer. And I've been told this is absolutely, this is really happening this time. The castle is safe. The castle, but we're retreating to the castle redoubts. Have, have you signed yet? No, no, the completion date is at such and such a time. Have you exchanged? No, no. We're still drawing up the contract. The town sank into a slough of despond. I'm totally disillusioned with the town now. I'm moving out. I'm moving out of Hay. No, I don't see Hay as home. Not anymore. It's just somewhere to put your head. When I'm up here, all I really want to do is pull the drawbridge up and be left alone. I'm looking for quietness. To be at one with nature. I've been wanting to build a treehouse for years, and now I'm finally building one. My family's been in here about a thousand years. It goes back from the year dot. I don't think my children will be around here. One has already left. I only like real people, and I don't find many real people out there anymore. They're all plastic. Is the King of Hay a real person? Of course he is. He's real? He's real, most definitely real. Some people will say he's a phony because he's in a phony crown. No, he's a... He'll always be my king. As the kingdom crumbled, old grudges resurfaced, and the battle was on for the spoils of war. It does annoy me when English people come and live here and they don't pronounce it, you know. I mean, would they go to France? And no. say, you know, no, Marcelles or well. something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We ought to be going around the shops and speaking Welsh and asking for services through the medium of Welsh, wherever we go, the post well, office, most, the banks, the, the doctors. Like, and the street signs. One of the councillors, they wanted the English on the top and the Welsh underneath. So I said, well, as we're in Wales, you should be on top, but then the English underneath. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Now the town is dusk. Each cobble, donkey, goose and gooseberry street is a thoroughfare of dusk and dusk and ceremonial dust and the night's first darkening snow and the sleep of birds drift under and through the live dusk of this place of love. But during the winter months the town emptied and its long-term residents reverted back to some of their more magical roles and wondrous ways. It hasn't grown since last year, hasn't it? Fuzzy up, Lil. Hey. What do you think, Lil? <laughs> anybody got a comb? Has Sam, have you got a comb? Have you all got a, have you all got a comb? <laughs> no. Lil, have you got a comb? There we go. Right, there's a comb. Thank you, Lil. Have you got a bit of lipstick? Lipstick. Yeah, that's better. Oh, my gosh, I haven't, yeah. 
Right, ready? Yeah. As you know, Lucy is the Latin word for lux, which means light, and Lucy is going to be turned into a living saint tonight, and I think we've got the handmaiden here as per usual, which is Dawn. Dawn, would you like, after I do a countdown, to crown Lucy? Five, four, three, two, one. Council offices with the lights on. It looks very, very poor up there because it hasn't got a star on or anything at all. It's just got a few lights on. So Dawn is actually going to go in disguise now. In, the, in disguise. And we will now put this on the top of the tree and lighten up here a little bit for the ready for Christmas. The independent spirit may have been dampened, but was far from dead. Oh, he's so strong, isn't he, that boy? No, no, top's too wide. The town gathered and watched as the heart and soul of the old hay burnt. First pub I ever went to for a drink, me and my brother. Every Friday we used to go. It was a time for reflection as a former way of life went up in smoke before their eyes. And he tapped the door and went out and had a look and could see there was smoke coming from it, from the roof. Was it the chimney or? I don't know what it was. She wanted to go back. Get her hand back in her checkbook. That's <laughs> shame, Mary, see it. I know the structure's there, isn't it, Mary? It will be all right, won't it? It will rise again. Look at the tower now and take life easy a bit. Enjoy life a bit. Retire gracefully. Further to my last briefing memorandum concerning the aforementioned town, notwithstanding other towns that may or may not have been investigated, I am pleased to report that the troublemakers, and I use this word advisedly, have fallen and the kingdom is therefore at an end. The town is now like any other and meets regulation guidelines. A breeze from the creased water sighs the streets close under milk-waking wood, the wood whose every tree foot's cloven in the black-clad sight of the hunters of lovers, that is a God-built garden to Mary Ann the sailors, who knows there is heaven on earth, and the chosen people of his kind fire in Claregib's land, that is the fair day farmhands wantoning ignorant chapel of bridesbeds, 
and to the Reverend L.I. Jenkins, a green-leaved sermon on the innocence of men. The suddenly wind-shaken wood springs awake for the second dark time this one spring day. There is a, a loss of confidence here. One thing you must never do is underestimate Richard. Never write him off. When we, um, should it come to it, uh, uh, walk behind his uh, coffin on the way to the grave, that is the time to say, well, it might be over. Until then, it most definitely isn't. And he will be king until that point. Hay is a, a cowboy town. Beneath our perceived reality is another reality. The castle made me a king. I got this building when nobody else wanted it. The castle is always under siege. People are always wanting to take the castle. But this battle for a book town does not allow castles to be fall to the enemy. They thought he will retire gracefully, which he won't. The king was returning to his more cantankerous ways. We've had to take action against Richard for the disruption he's been causing around the town. His Majesty the King of Hay, having been a student at Oxford University studying the French Revolution, knows that only the execution of important people is amusing. He was going to get rid of the, we wanted to, hang you know, the mayor. hang the mayor, chop, you know, execute the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, they're awful, they're dreadful, they're doing a terrible job, etc, etc. He'd had a scaffold erected, Goffey dressed up as the executioner, Les Penning was sort of like the town crier. And he has probably caused more... He's caused more disruptions in this town than anybody. So, you know, he's done a lot of good. Yeah, sure, sure. So then Richard thought that was terribly funny and that he'd have more public executions of supposed figures. So, 5 o'clock, Friday the 26th of July, a tea party to discuss the best methods of publicly executing three scoundrels, which is the mayor, the ex-mayor, and the president of the Chamber of Commerce. We talked to the police about it and such like, and they took necessary action, and all is well. There was a minor incident with Mr. Boo, and certainly not when I'm afraid I'm going to comment on. I find it quite chilling, actually, because, you know, it was like you know, we, in America, where all of a sudden something has cracked in a school or blown Well, we had to, I mean, the police... And run in with a gun and shot. I know, mean, well, it was inciting the kids seemed, as well. It was, it was doing also, no good at I all. I just thought there just has to be somebody slightly off balance here. Well, it <laughs> It went over the line. It, in yeah, any I mean, civilised community, there's a line. It's I think there's a line in every... you put it. It's not just going up to Spar to okay. get someone... Yeah, anywhere you have a line. I mean, any town... I mean, what is normal and reasonable behaviour, you know, is the same everywhere, in my view. I mean, somebody, you know, goes over the line. The line is um, behaving in a reasonable manner. He just want to say, oh, grow up. We've all got our characters, and he's certainly one of them. Give the government, that other government, what it wants, we say to them. If you require council tax, if you want some road tax or whatever you want, um, OK, have it. You pay them off, like a, a gangster. And now, will you go away, please? We don't care what you do. We are independent. Don't you understand that? Say, yes, we are independent and you can have your money. Take it and go away, please. <laughs> Meanwhile, the King of Hay was busy making new allegiances with ever burgeoning dreams for his empire of books. And, uh, so we will be going into every country, into Eastern Europe. Yes. We will act as friends together. And the other thing which is absolutely indispensable, I need. A balcony there, because I'm a great admirer of Mussolini, <laughs> and I do <need> that. <laughs> then you have a spotlight in the left-hand corner yeah. and a spotlight in the right-hand corner, yes, yes. and I can give a nice speech. <laughs> <laughs> you he came to a sticky end, didn't he, Mussolini? 
Yes, I know, but um, I am surrounded by the roughest, hardest <laughs> troops in the world, which is the working class of this era. Well, there you go. Richard can go off at tangents, and he has this ability to sort of start things afresh, really, but of course, I mean, you know, he's not in the best of health now, you know, and so um, the energy, uh, you know, he needs sort of three or four times as much energy to do that. Um, whether he's capable of doing it again, I don't know. Oh, there no! Even the smallest creature crawling around hay would, would know that Richard is king as long as you recognise it, and, and um, a certain amount of other people recognise it. Um, there you are. You've done it. There are no small creatures calling around hay, by the way. We're all, we're all magnificent subjects, and all have a part to play. My crown has just had a new coat of brass ah. It was the main rumours around town. Look, I might be selling the business. It's a very important event. Let's put the clue. It's the second coming of the king. The original vision of how, which is an expansion of the second hand economy, as opposed to the new economy, the economy that has a standard of quality and not quantity, this must be the role of the future. If we get dragged into the industrial society, which is that if people write enough kind of Harry Poppinses, they apparently affect the stock exchange. That's not for us. Long live the king. <laughs> you come with me, old boy, because you are the person who will stop me stumbling. I keep them safe, need lock and key, and all I could would be for me. And so it was, it was just so. It's hard to tame an independent soul. And whereas I have no happy ending, we in the Kingdom of Hay took the road less travelled, and that made all the difference. Hush, the babies are sleeping, the farmers, the fishers, the tradesmen and pensioners, cobbler, school teacher, postman and publican, the undertaker and the fancy woman, drunkard, dressmaker, preacher, policeman, the webfoot cockle women and the tidy wives. Look, it is night. You can hear the dew falling and the hushed town breathing. Time passes. Listen. Time passes. Okay.